In today's video, how much muscle can you build naturally? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss the idea of how much muscle we can expect to put on without the assistance of things like performance enhancing drugs, okay? Um, first thing we need to clarify is when we're talking about natural, what does natural mean? Well, I am just going to say that it means we don't put exogenous hormones in our body. That's it. End of discussion. So, how much muscle can we expect to build without performance enhancing drugs? And um, it's a question that I've actually asked myself quite a bit and pondered throughout my life and my expectations have changed. I think early on when you start training, the first thing you do is you, so you see all this progress happening, you start looking around at other people and you think, well that guy's bigger than me, he's on stuff. That guy's more ripped than me, he's on stuff. That girl lifts more than me, she's definitely on stuff. And you start to point fingers and you start to consume yourself with what else everyone else is doing. And um, you know, you start to hear rumors about who is and who isn't. And I, I think even with the internet, I see a lot of people making a name for themselves by calling out somebody. Somebody's not natty, this person's not natty. And I think um, it's much ado about nothing. I think feeding into people's fears and their insecurities when you do that, it's not actually adding any value or benefit. You're just kind of a gossip monger. And so I, I choose not to get into that. But I wanna actually talk about some real like sciencey type stuff about what's possible naturally because you know, uh, my buddy Eric Helms has been making some really cool posts on his Instagram, um, and I got an Instagram direct message, which I'll post up here, kind of basically asking me what some expectations can be for natural muscle building. And I think the first thing we all want to hear is what's possible, how much weight can we put on, and um, you know what can be expected. Well. There's such a variation in the human condition, and by that I mean, you know, there's people walking around the earth that are seven and a half feet tall, there's people walking around the earth that are three, four feet tall, right? So there's just a huge range, and you wouldn't accuse someone who's short or very tall of being on PEDs, but uh, we will certainly assume somebody that has a little more muscle than us is on something, okay? And so for this reason, it's, it's quite a common topic. First thing I wanna say is you, you can't change your genetic potential. You can't change your genetics. Your genetics are predetermined before you ever start lifting weights or thinking about lifting weights. So don't be over consumed with what's possible. I never thought it would be possible for me to look the way I do. When I first started lifting, maybe I'll be able to include a picture here, and I don't want this to be about too much about me, but just the idea of what would be possible. If I had seen myself in this current state when I was 16, 17 years old, when I first started lifting, I would have said, that guy's on stuff. You can't be vein, you can't be vascular, you can't have muscle, right? Um, but I've learned a lot. The first thing I wanna talk about is being a good athlete, being kind of predisposed to being able to put on muscle without really trying or without it being your primary focus. You know, there was a couple guys that I went to high school with that I can clearly remember. I can picture in my head right now being in like gym class with them or, um, you know, even taking a weightlifting class. And there was this young guy named Marlon who was about 130 pounds. And I remember just a, you know, short stature guy who benched over 300 pounds and his muscles seemed to like fall off his body. He was just, just densely packed muscle. And, you know, we're talking about 16, 17 years old. And, um, you know, those images are just born into my brain you know i grew up playing a lot of sports baseball basketball and i was just always around people that were just extremely talented like people that could you know have 45 inch verticals and could dunk from the free throw line i, I went to college with a kid that could do that and um you know people that could run the 40 and and 4.3 seconds just sprint well were those people always on something do we always assume that just because somebody is kind of exceptional in one area or another that they're on something? Well, no, back then you, know, you didn't think that. I don't even think that now because when you've seen people do extreme things, you don't make those assumptions anymore. I just I just know that we get comfortable. I'll post, a, uh, see if I can find something on the internet to post 
the what's called a bell curve, right? And the bell curve explains that most people fit in this 80% window within this nice big bell curve in the middle. And hopefully I have a graph up here. But a lot of people don't realize that this is the norm, but there's gonna be people that fall on either side, right? So if, if most people are in the middle here, that's gonna be me and you and just about everybody else you know. Well, who's on the extremely muscular side that we can think of? Well, you know, I'll probably post a picture up here of somebody like Doug Miller. Doug Miller I would consider to be on this extremely crazy side of the bell curve as a natural bodybuilder. You know, and I know Doug and you guys can argue with me, but I completely believe that he is a drug-free lifetime bodybuilder. Just do. You can disagree. That's fine. But I would consider him on this end of the bell curve. Well, who would be on this end of the bell curve? Well, somebody that they go to the gym for, for five years consistently eating and training and they don't really even look like they lift, right? Why are they there? Well, it probably comes down to predispo predisposition of like muscle fiber type, predisposition of muscle insertions, genetic things that you can't control. You can't control the, the muscle insertions and the muscle bellies that Doug Miller has. I've sat next to him, I've spent time with him. Like you just, you're in awe of it and it's just the way it is. Now, I myself think I'm okay. I've had a good run. I've spent 20 years lifting weights and I have a little bit to show for it. I feel good about it. And again, this isn't about me, but it's about the expectation that you're setting for yourself when you ask me this question. Um, and I don't want to disappoint you by telling you, well, you're never going to look like Doug Miller. Well, you can still look like the best goddamn version of yourself. I think that, 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 that version, okay, if we're on the bell curve, we're on the crappy side, right, at the start, you know, you start to get into some pretty good stuff and you can get over there and get compared to some people like Doug. Doesn't mean you'll ever get there, but putting in the work for two years, five years, 10 years consistently, that's really the only way that you're gonna find these things out. And if I was to tell you tomorrow that, you know what, you're probably not going to put on another five pounds of muscle in your lifetime if you train your butt off. Would you quit going to the gym? Well, then it's just not for you. If you told me tomorrow, you know what, dude, you've had a good run, but no matter how hard you train, how well you sleep, and how perfectly you eat, you're not putting on another ounce of muscle for the rest of your life, I'd still go to the gym. It's part of me, it's part of what I do, it's part of something I love. And so I don't get hung up on the he says, she says, what's possible, what's not possible. I just go do, okay? And I think that's the difference with, with asking this question is that it's much ado about nothing, okay? You, you're not going to change it. Now, if I told you that you're not gonna put on any more muscle in the next few months and then you decide that you, you know what, I wanna put on more muscle than what's possible. I'm gonna start taking some exogenous hormones and make this happen, more power to you. I would just suggest that you spend a couple years to see what's possible, go through the process. I don't think that anyone should even think about that kind of thing, and I'm not against it. Don't get me wrong, I love bodybuilding, all types of it. This is just what's for me, but I still love seeing freaks and the people that just you know, gosh, I love bodybuilding of all, of all shapes and sizes. And, you know, part of me wishes that there was a possibility that I could, I could go that route and still be me, but it wouldn't be me. So I do me, but I still love that side of it. But I still think you need to spend two, three years, five years minimum, really just pushing some weight, getting stronger, um, really seeing what's possible with yourself before you give that a thought. So what's possible? You know what? Look around, go to some local competitions, go see some people, go on Instagram, look for people your height, your weight, um, see what you're capable of, see what kind of change you make in a six month, one year period, track your progress with lifts, track your progress with pictures, track your nutrition, right? Be consistent. And one thing that I've really enjoyed about the process that's allowed me to stay away from that side of the sport is that I've made progress. Sure, I haven't put on 50 pounds of muscle, but I've changed. Every time that I've dieted down and competed, I've seen a different physique. I've seen something that I didn't see before. I've added thickness to my shoulders, to my back, to my legs. I've gotten more detail in my body. I've got more vascularity now than I've ever had. You know, things are always changing. So for me, that's really what makes it exciting. It's not that I need to be the biggest person ever. It's that I'm putting in work and I'm seeing some progress. And I think if you're doing that, you're gonna enjoy the process. So that's my thought. What's possible? Who knows? 
you know, I think if you look back at some of the great natural bodybuilders and look at their pictures from high school, you probably didn't see what was possible with them, but they've just been at it for so long that you really start to see the potential when you just stick with it. And um, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. I wish I could give you a number like, you know, it's possible to add five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I don't know. I will say this. If, I'll give you a, an example of myself, and I, I, can, I consider myself slightly above average for muscle building, okay? Um, you know, I was a very good athlete, so I think, you know, I have some potential there. I'm definitely not on that Doug Miller type curve, but I'm also not the worst. But I will say, if I had never lifted weights, and I'd, let's say I just continued to play sports my whole life, I'd, I'd say I probably put on 15 pounds of lean body mass on my frame above what I would have been had I just been a normal guy walking around playing softball on the weekends and uh, shooting baskets with my friends and going out drinking and stuff. I think I'd probably put on maybe 15, maybe 20 pounds, you know, um, which, you know, for some people, maybe that wouldn't be worth it. But for me, it's certainly been worth it. So hopefully this, this helps you out, answers your questions. If you guys have questions or comments below, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts, what you think is possible, where you guys get your calculations, what, what you prefer to believe, um, and who's natural and who's not. And uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Oh, yeah. If you're seeing this video on Tuesday, well, I'm shooting it at night. The reason I'm shooting it at night is because I'm at the hospital right now. My wife is giving birth to our second son. We have a scheduled appointment tomorrow at the hospital. So, yeah, um, hope you guys are having an awesome day, and uh, congrats to me.